How's everyone doing guys? Cody guys back again dropping another video. Right guys, um, today's video is going to be on the uh, the mini riot that happened on E-Wing last night at um, Long Latin Prison. Um, it's a Cat 8 prison. Um, it holds um, like prisoners that are doing a minimum of four years um, up to obviously life and stuff like that. Um, I think even whole life tariff prisoners are in that prison as well. Um, but yeah, like I say, um, the prison holds like 622 prisoners, um, understaffing, mental health. Um, they brought in a stricter uh, dress code, which is having people turning up for visits and stuff and not being able to get in, which has obviously caused the lads grief and stuff. The, the prison system, guys, is broken, right? It's beyond words, right? Um, just because people are in prison doesn't mean necessarily that they're bad people. Yes, they've committed crime. Yes, they've been caught. And prison and having your liberty taken away, that's the punishment. Um, but prison should be a place of reform and rehabilitation. Um, being locked up in your cell, depending on what prison you're in and what regime you're running. Um, but prisoners find themselves, it f can be locked up for anything up to 23 hours a day. No work, no education, no skills, no training, no reform, no rehabilitation. Um... And that's why prison is a revolving door and stuff and people get out and then with 46 quid um, and then end up back inside getting breached or something or end up in a bail or still getting breached, recall, all the usual stuff. Um, the, you add into the mix the smoking ban and stuff, obviously prisons are very violent, very volatile, very lawless, very dangerous places and stuff. With fewer prison officers, um, with obviously the use of like drugs new psychoactive substances like spice, prison alcohol known as hooch, um, anger issues, mental health. Like I say, you put all them, you put all them um, ingredients I into one location um, and the, the consequences are explosive. Now, the smoking ban, which the Prison Officers Association, who are moaning about now because they're like, well, it's kicking off, people. prisoners are not happy. They actually, the guys... The Prison Officers Association, they wanted the smoking ban, right? But everybody knows, prisoners, people in the know, prisoners' families know that tobacco is used as a coping mechanism. It's a stress relief. If you're stressed, I don't smoke personally, but if you're in prison and you are stressed, which will be a lot of the time, burn or tobacco is big business, right? It's used as people use it as currency. Uh, people use it to obviously, to obviously buy things. People lend it to other prisoners and then they get what they call double bubble so if you borrow an eighth and um, you have to you have to give a quarter back if you have to borrow a quarter you give half ounce if you borrow half ounce you have to give an ounce back it's called double bubble um big business in prison but just because you ban something doesn't mean it, it disappears and stuff right right they'll stop selling it on the canteen and stuff right but it still comes in Prisoners, prisoners' families and friends and girlfriends will bring it in on visits and stuff, hand it over, right? Because the the the, re, the reward, right? You can, I'm hearing people paying over a hundred pounds for an ounce for an Oz uh, in prison and stuff, right? I'm out now. I got out in February this year, guys, right? But like I say, burn is big business. So the Ministry of Justice by banning it and the POA, the POA is the Prison Officers Association. Uh, they represent prison officers and stuff. Um, they they've actually lobbied for this. Uh, they actually, the POA, the Prison Officers Association, wanted this ban on smoking to come into force, which they should have known was going to light a fuse. The, the prison system has been a powder keg forever and a day. The fuse was lit a long time ago, and my honest opinion is there's going to be wide, wide, big, high um, disorder in prisons up and down the country and stuff. And when you see an incident like this get into the public domain, like the one that happened on E-Wing last night at Long Light in prison, uh, you get copycat incidents in other prisons and stuff, right? Prisoners, the fact is, prisoners have had enough. Um, the sick have been treated like shit. Like I say, by taking people's smoking privileges away, all it means, guys, is it gets pushed underground, the prices go up, and like I say, people are paying in excess of £100 for an ounce. For an ounce. Um, that's just the way it is. Prisons, like I say, the Prison Officers Association wanted the smoking ban. Now they've got it. They've got to deal with the repercussions, but they don't want to deal with the repercussions. So they run to the government. Oh, well, we're understaffed. But when the Prison Officers Association lobbied for the smoking ban to come in, they probably didn't know that the government was going to screw them and, and end up cutting, obviously, the, the prison officer numbers. So now they're understaffed. Now they've got low morale. Now they're overstretched. Now they're overworked, right? And then, like I say, I'd, I'd, I'd like to know that 
prisoner to prison officer ratio in that prison in the last prison I was in uh, it was 30 prisoners to one officer and that was at HMP Forest Bank you can see it on a the t-shirt there guys and that's just the way it goes um, but obviously the prison system guys you add in just just put it into perspective right prisoners are angry they're frustrated a lot of them have got mental health problems you see in record prisons are getting out for less periods of time but you're seeing record numbers of assaults obviously self-harm can take place as well but that takes place behind people's doors um like i say you've got a suicide once every three days in prison um and yet the ministry of justice do absolutely nothing the reason i do interviews the reason i do these vlogs the reason i speak out um, is because prisoners are suffering guys in silence prisoners families are suffering in silence now obviously I am one of many people that campaign for prison reform, um, but I've been very lucky. The fact that the media have picked up on my vlogs and stuff like that, and the fact, obviously, to an extent, I know what I'm talking about, and that's why I've been in the position to do interviews and stuff. I speak out for prisoners, I speak out for prisoners' families, and I give the reality of prison and stuff, because the fact is prison doesn't work. People serving under two years shouldn't be in prison. Um, the court should have more faith in uh, community orders, which serves a purpose. You're working for free in the public. The people know why you're there. It's embarrassing. And like I said, you're serving a purpose. You're giving something back to the community. In prison, all you are is you sit, you're a drain on society because obviously taxpayers are having to fund you. It costs about £40,000 a year to house somebody in prison. Um, and like I say, prisons are counterproductive. People are going to prison having never taken drugs in their life. And because of the surroundings and the stuff and the frustration and the boredom, they take drugs as a coping mechanism. Um, a lot of people in prison that shouldn't be in prison, but like I say, people with mental health problems, people with severe disabilities, people with autism. Um, prisoners' families are suffering immeasurably and stuff. They see these headlines and stuff and these riots and stuff, and they think, well, bloody hell, my son's on E-Wing, it could be him and stuff. And they think that, like, he could get attacked. So, like I say, 26,643 incidents of assault in the last 12 months, which is a record high. Um, like I say, the people, prisoners, families, doesn't matter how big and bad you are, when you're in prison and stuff, your family, like that, your mum and that are still going to think, well, that's my baby boy, that's my dog, because so obviously you've got female prisoners, it could be them next and stuff, and that, that, that's the concern, that's the worry. Um, like I say, the, the prison system's broken, yet the Ministry of Justice do nothing. Um, the reason, like I said, the reason I speak out is because the Ministry of Justice tries so hard to stop stories getting out. Um, if a prisoner's family contact the media and say, oh, he's been given a kick in by some screws, right? Uh, the, 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 the media will contact the prison. The prison will state a blanket policy from the Ministry of Justice. We do not discuss individual cases, right? Now, in other words, the Ministry of Justice don't want stories getting out, right? And things like this, this, this riot on Ewing last night, where obviously the tornado squads have been drafted in and stuff, um... Like, they don't like it because then you get copycat incidents in other prisons and stuff. M my honest opinion, guys, straight up, is that it will take another riot similar to the Strangeways riot back in 1990 uh, for prison reform, to, for, for something to be done about it. I hope it doesn't come to that. Obviously, I, I, I do. Um, but like I say, you've seen Winston Green prison riots. The, the, there's been, there's just disorder and disorder. And prisons, violent incidents taking pr place in prisons up and down the country every single day. Um, some are bigger than others and stuff um, but like I say anyone that's got somebody in prison you've got a duty of care to get the word out if you speak to your loved one on the phone find out has there been any violent incidents in prison has there been many riots has there been a death in custody get the name get the cells get the information get it to the media it puts more pressure on the on the Ministry of Justice and the media guys the, there's no positive stories coming out of prisons guys because there's no positive stories happening in prisons there's a lot of good people, organisations on the outside uh, that are trying to detail towards re reform and rehabilitation and stuff. But inside prisons and stuff, with reoffending costing £15 billion a year and with fewer police on the streets, right, prison should be the last line of defence. The Ministry of Justice should be given a blank cheque to get skills training and education for prisoners across the board of every category um, to better themselves, to give them the skills and things so when they get out they can break the cycle of crime, get a job pay tax back into the system um, and thus saving the taxpayer money by not re-entering the prison system but like I say um, I live in a fantasy world don't I it'll never come to fruition um, but yeah guys with the, with, the, with, with the prison system and stuff obviously they are understaffed they have got low morale um, I used to uh, my I feel sorry for a lot of prison officers within the system but then there's a prison officer spokesman called Mark Furhurst 
who works in Liverpool at H&P Liverpool and he thinks that we should all be shackled and chained and locked up for sustained periods and stuff, which is already happening. Uh, obviously, they're not the chain side of things, but wanting to bring in chains so that prisoners are chained together and stuff. Do you know what I mean, different times in era. What an absolute clueless guy is it? I've done many interviews alongside a guy called Mike Rolf. Mike Rolf is a he's, he's a spokesman for the Prison Officers Association. He's clued up, and we've echoed each other's thoughts in in, in previous interviews and stuff. But this Mike Furrest is. He's obviously an old school screw that thinks that we should be should be locked up and then we should be chained together like some sort of chain gang in America, like back in the 1800s or something. It's unbelievable. It's inhumane. It'd be a breach of prisoners' human rights, um, and he's absolutely clueless. But like I say, guys, with understaffing, with mental health, with prisons are bursting at the seams. And like I say, you add into the mix anger issues, frustration, boredom, mental health problems, add into the mix drugs, new psychotic substances like spice, prison alcohol, known as hooch, um, and the, the, the smoking ban. It, it, all the ingredients are there, guys, for explosive, explosive consequences. And you will see widespread disorder within prisons. My honest opinion, it's it's not if, it is simply when. Um, it'll be a matter of days, weeks before there's another major incident within prisons and stuff. Um, as we speak, it's been um, debated in the Houses of Parliament. But all these MPs, guys, and the, these academics within government and stuff, uh, they, they lack the basic common sense that's needed to sort out the prison system. Uh, what do I know, guys? I'm a thick, uneducated street kid from Manchester. But I've been in prison. I might not be academic. Uh, I might not have been academic in school. I might not have any degrees to my name. I might not have a GCSE to my name. But I've got life experience, guys. I've been in prison. I've seen it firsthand. Um, and the Ministry of Justice should be working with prison reform campaigners, prisoners, prisoners' families, uh, prison officers uh, to change the system for the better. Um, like I say, with less police on the streets and reoffending costing £15 billion a year, with community police stations closing down, with the police being a less visual deterrent on the streets, um, prison should be the last line of defence. Prison should be places of reform and rehabilitation. Unfortunately, you're thrown behind your door. Um, you, you can spend up to 23 hours a day locked up. Um, that starts mental health problems and also makes it a lot worse. Germinates mental health problems for those that have already got mental health problems in the system. And there are a lot. I would like to know the, the actual percentage of prisoners in prison with mental health problems um, because it would be astronomical. It would be well over 50%. I reckon 60, 70 60, 70, 80%. Because like I say, depression, autism, um, anxiety, um, like paranoid schizophrenia, schizophrenia. They're all mental health problems. Anger issues all stem from mental health. And like I say, being locked up for that amount of time where you don't know what's happening outside your door, outside your landing, outside your wing, outside your cell, uh, outside the, the prison walls. It's a frustrating, dangerous time and stuff. Like I say, prisoners not being with the kids and stuff, uh, prisoners' families and stuff like being turned away from visits because they've, they've, they're wearing open toe sandals. But yet the Ministry of Justice state how important it is for family ties to me maintain whilst you're in prison. Now, my assessment as a former prisoner is that um, when you're in prison, um, your family connections can be the difference between life and death. Now, then you flip the coin. Not everyone in prison's got a support network. Not everyone in prison's got somewhere to go back to. Not everyone in prison has a family connection. Not everyone in prison has friends and stuff like that. Like I say, people are going to prison having never taken drugs in their life and are leaving as drug addicts or worse in body bags because the anxiety and stuff like that, of they, get, they go to prison on short sentences, then they lose their accommodation because they can't pay the rent and stuff. Um, then they get out with £46, they've got no support network, they've got nowhere to go. What do they do? They resort back to crime. What happens then? They get arrested, they get breached, they get recalled, they end up back in prison. People uh, are leaving prison with addictive tendencies like alcohol, new psychoactive substances like spice, drugs and stuff like that. A lot of people are already in prison with, with a history of drug abuse and alcohol abuse and stuff. They're getting out, they're being put in... Um, they're being put in... Um, bail hostels and stuff and then they get breathalyzed for alcohol they get drug tested and stuff if if they if they if they piss positive um or they breathe over whatever micrograms it is per hundred milliliter of of breath they go back to prison so the swinging door and swinging door and swinging door uh, revolving door takes place and place staff retention is a problem within hmp obviously prison officers are leaving the job at a rate of knots Prison officers are suffering with mental health problems because of the things they're seeing, post-traumatic stress and stuff. Uh, prisoners inside are, are, are broken when they go into prison. 
Prison makes them disenfranchised even more, breaks them, breaks the spirit, locks them up, starts mental health problems, become a, which then become free boredom, can become addiction. People drink drugs to escape the reality of the surroundings. And, and it's all made up and stuff. And, and then you see the results on E-Wing last night at Long Light in Prison. It's as simple as that. It doesn't take a rocket scientist guy, guys, to work out what's going on and the state of the prison system. Um, but I'm going to leave this video here, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Hope I did this video justice and I'll speak to you all soon. Cody out. Bye.